West Edmonton Mall was conceived not just as a shopping mall, but a true world-class tourist attraction. Between 1980 and 1986, West Edmonton Mall was built, opened, nearly doubled in size, and then more than doubled in size. And whether they added new attractions or new phases to the mall, they did so with a high level of uniqueness. They weren't just adding new stores, no, they were, they were building a destination. Imagine a vacation where you would ride roller coasters until midnight one day, and the next you'd be on a tropical beach in the middle of winter. You'd be golfing on a miniature version of one of the world's most iconic courses before embarking on a submarine tour through the world's largest indoor lake. And at the end of the day, you'd retire to your room, surrounded by Polynesian decor, African savanna, or even trucks. Hit the sack in the back of a truck. And in between all those attractions, it wasn't a mere mall concourse you were traversing. The novelty followed you from store to store, with exhibits and statues surrounding your shopping experience. Modeled after a Parisian street, Europa Boulevard's sidewalk cafes and street fountains brought a taste of Europe. But if you wanted more than just a taste, you'd venture into the mall's premier dining district, Bourbon Street. A taste of New Orleans right here in Edmonton. With over 800 stores and services to visit at West Edmonton Mall, you're bound to work up an appetite. And when you do, Bourbon Street offers so many options for superb dining and entertainment to please everyone in the family. Today, the title has been stylized to be a more modern version of the original name, as has the street itself. And you'll find some pretty darn good food down here. Personal favorites of mine include the pizza burger at first round and Moguyan hand-pulled noodle. It's really, really good. But stepping back in time, West Hampton Mall's dining district felt a little different than it does right now. You'd find life-size jesters, masks, faces, wands, musicians, and even massive oversized heads right out in the mall concourse. It was not subtle. Their smiles always seemed whimsical to me, but some have remarked that these heads made them feel a little uneasy. When the street updated its theme to the look and feel we know today, these statues and decorations were put up for auction, sending them to different locations both near and far. Considering that you can still buy some of these statues brand new today, it would be impossible to track down where they all ended up. Last year, there was a local story about a woman who had one of the oversized masks in her garage. One look at this familiar face and Marlene Alexander knew she had to have it. And I gotta say, the vibrant era of West Hampton Mall's Eatery Street was awesome. A lot of people have fond, nostalgic memories from these times. But for me, the Bourbon Street that lives on in my heart is the one which opened originally, when the mall was expanding for its second time in the mid-1980s. It's a zoo, it's an amusement park, and it's a shopping mall too. People go there for all sorts of reasons, and you can call it whatever you want. The West Edmonton Mall, already the biggest one in the world, just got bigger. This was when it was going all out, so to speak. Animal exhibits, submarines, water slides, the mind bender. Everything that came before all felt like small potatoes. This was when West Edmonton Mall became truly magical. And yes, I know I'm talking about a shopping mall, and I don't care what you say, it was magical. The expansion also brought to life a vision for the dining district. The mall already had a food court, and they were about to get another, but what about those who wanted a dining experience? Well, cue the original Bourbon Street. Bourbon Street is West Edmonton Mall's high energy nightlife scene. Every night is Mardi Gras at West Edmonton Mall. Inspired by Louisiana itself, this themed area was designed to look and feel like a nighttime stroll down a real New Orleans street. The sky was painted a dark green and incandescent bulbs simulated stars above. The street was lined with lampposts and cast iron fences, surrounded by restaurants all accented with a facade of buildings. And throughout the experience, statues tied everything together. Beat cops, ladies of the night, partygoers, and musicians made you feel like you were in the middle of it all. A high energy nighttime celebration in the middle of the American South. And restaurants like Cafe Orleans would even serve you authentic style Cajun cuisine. Walking past the cars on the street, the fortune tellers and the street vendors, and looking up at the stars above, at least as a child, it seems so completely out of this world to me. 
As a kid, it was just as authentic a feeling as walking under the tiki torch lit Adventureland sign at Disneyland. And I'll say it again, West Edmonton Mall was magical. So a few years ago, when I heard from a fan that a piece of this original magic was available at a local auction, I wasn't about to miss out like I had with those Bourbon Street jesters. So in February of 2020, I brought home an original Bourbon Street jazz musician. This was from the musical quintet, which lived just outside the doors of Edmonton's only hard rock cafe, advertised out in the mall with that epic oversized neon spinning guitar. The tuba player rounded out a set of statues made to appear as if they were marching down the street, filling the area with music. By the time this statue made it to my home, it was still in surprisingly good shape. There were a couple of places where the paint underwent a little touch-up, but it was all minor. Any imperfections are not prominent at all. Over time, the mouthpiece of his tuba had sagged and fallen away from his lips. But again, this was easily fixed by adjusting the strap over his shoulders. Whoever owned this statue before I got it had it mounted on an old tire rim. This is probably my least favorite thing about it, but I keep it on there because the long pegs which are welded onto the rim extend up through the feet of the statue. Not only does this platform give the statue a nice boost in height, it actually makes it a lot more stable. One day I'd like to have some sort of decorative wood frame built around this base so it would look a little more polished, but for now, it's fine. After getting my hands on it, I tried to track down those who made these statues. And there's a small clue printed on the pocket of his jacket. 3D Imagery Incorporated. This is a pretty generic name, and my searches have not proven fruitful. Every time I can't figure something like this out, someone in the comments does it with a level of speed and ease that just puts me to shame. So please, if your sleuthing skills can shed some light on where these statues came from, let us all know. Okay, so other than the fact that I absolutely adore having this in my basement web museum, contributing to my collection of all things West Edmonton Mall, there is one thing about this statue that I love more than anything else. Something I had no idea about before I brought it home. When I was setting it up in its place, I noticed a couple of wires hanging from the bottom of one of his feet. These wires lead up the statue and into the authentic tuba which is being held by the musician. A tuba with a speaker in its bell. Connecting a Bluetooth-enabled audio amplifier to these wires results in a fully functional, Louisiana-themed Bluetooth speaker. The magic that I experienced growing up visiting West Hampton Mall, for me, it'll never die. I can still remember being in awe of the submarine rides and the over-the-top roller coasters. Memories of spending so much time in the wave pool that my body would somehow simulate the feeling of jumping with the waves as I lay in bed at night. In between the attractions, I remember being in the middle of all the overtop experiences of the world's largest shopping mall. Now, I have another piece of that to call my own. And if paired with the right style of music, you just might travel back in time. If you could bring home a piece of your childhood, what would it be? Share it with us in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like and a share. And maybe even visit my Patreon page. And why not check out one of my other videos? All about the greatest indoor show on earth. West Edmonton Mall. Oh, and thanks for watching.